It's that time once again as another My Hero Academia episode has come and gone, and the battle between Overhaul and Deku has gotten underway. My reviews are going to work in a way where I talk about the new episode and its contents while glancing over what I think was cool, talk about my favorite characters and moment in the episode, and then if I feel like there is anything worth mentioning in regards to it, I'll also talk about my least favorite character and moment. With that introduction out of the way, I don't want to waste any more time and just get right into this. Episode 12 opens up with a scene a few minutes prior to our post-credits moment from the previous episode. Deku, Night Eye, and Eraserhead have worked together with the police to restrain and arrest Mimic, and quickly come to find out that the only two League of Villains members who have shown up at this compound were indeed Toga and Twice. Night Eye quickly deduces that they were conned by them into helping take out Mimic, and they're probably being used as pawns to defeat Overhaul in general, but they'll just need to deal with that. The police debate what they should do about Toga and Twice, since they, like the rest of the League, are wanted across the country, but Rocklock quickly chimes in saying that they need to go and help Lemillion against Overhaul and no longer waste any time. Even though the League of Villains is a group of wanted criminals, their top priority today is to rescue Eri, and for Rocklock it means a lot more than the others realize. There are so many others in and around this compound that are working incredibly hard to try and help save Eri, and for the group who has made it as far as they have to stop at any point, it is just disgraceful to Rocklock. The trio takes off with the police police down a hallway after being enlightened, and Deku promises Rocklock that they'll save Eri without a doubt. Rocklock thinks to himself to when he first met the UA students during the briefing a short while back, and he remarks that he didn't make his comments then to be disparaging to them. Rocklock's wife is a few years younger than him, and they recently had a child, so the idea of young life being in danger scares him, no matter how capable they might be. However, when the students were let loose, they acted more as heroes than any of the adults even tried to be. As Deku's and the others escape his sight, Rocklock tells them they have to take responsibility and save Eri. High above Rocklock in a hidden crevice of the ceiling, Toga and Twice watches the heroes take off to find Overhaul again. Twice asks Toga what they should do now, and while Toga does say she'd love to see a beaten up Deku, she wants to see Overhaul cry even more. Twice whispers in the Toga Zero plan that he apparently has come up with, and Toga remarks that something like that would make Shigaraki happy as well. Regardless of its outcome, Toga hopes that the conclusion of this fight between heroes and Yakuza results in everyone getting very beaten up. Finally, we reach the post credit scene from the previous episode with Deku, Night Eye, and Eraserhead crashing through a wall, just as a now quirkless Togata is about to face the wrath of Overhaul. Deku crashes into Overhaul with a massive punch to the arm, sending him flying backwards, and Eraserhead quickly erases his quirk. Night Eye heads over to Mirio and Eri and holds them in an embrace, letting them know that all will be fine now that help has arrived. As Eraser and Deku leap into action to stand on top of Overhaul, Overhaul, he screams for Chrono to get up, and within a moment, Eraser shoves away Deku and is suddenly grazed by a blade that seems to be coming out of the top of Chrono's head. Overhaul comments to himself that Chrono took a bit longer to get up than he had hoped, but seeing as how he had but a moment to fix the head injury he had back when Mario threw him at him earlier, it couldn't be helped. Eraser head now in a free fall from the sky is unable to keep his quirk activated any longer, and blinks allowing Overhaul to stop Deku from attacking more by throwing up a ton of spikes. A body falls to the ground in front of Overhaul, belonging to one of his loyal followers, Shin. Overall speaks to himself of not allowing his plans to end here, and that Shin wouldn't want to see him defeated in this moment either. He assures his co-art that he has done a great job up to his point and puts his hand on him, combining their cellular structures together to create a single being. Overall proclaims that all a million and the other heroes have done was for nothing as he would take Eri back and kill them all, and his body is changed to look like that of a Machamp. Below ground, Chrono has taken Eraserhead hostage and stabbed him once more with the blade from his head. It turns out that these blades will slow down anyone who they stab and make them move at a snail's pace for a set amount of time. President Mike lets us know that Chrono's quirk is chronostasis, and essentially the same stuff I just said. He then brings up how while developing that serum that removes quirks, they constantly use Eraserhead's quirk as a reference point. Point. He fills us in on a bit of backstory for Eri, saying that she is a granddaughter of the true head of the Hasekai, and that Overhaul has been using her to help achieve his goals because that's just the kind of person he is. Overhaul monologues for a bit, saying that he is obsessed with being clean, and that when people touch him, his blood boils. He says that it's the first time things have gotten to a point like this for him. He says that Lemillion has lived a sad life, and if he had ever gotten involved with he and Eri, he wouldn't have lost the quirk he worked so hard to make powerful. Deku and Night Eye are stunned to hear this, and Overhaul continues to absolutely rail into Tagata for ever dragging others into this and continue to hurt Eri. Deku has had enough, however, as he leaps into action and a brawl begins between the two again, but Night Eye steps in demanding Deku go with Togata and Eri and let him fight Overhaul. Deku obliges, and Night Eye starts to do battle with Overhaul, but a flashback occurs in that moment. Night Eye recalls a discussion with Togata, where he taught him that he needed to take in several factors to being a hero on top of his quirk, and that with them, he could be a tremendous hero. Togata believed in what Night Eye tried to teach him, and because of that, even without his quirk, he still fought with Overhaul for as long as he could. 
Matt, I think, back to a conversation he had with Gran Torino, where he let him know he wouldn't look into anyone's future because he believes doing so will seal their fate, since everything he has seen always comes to pass. The battle continues for only a short moment as Night Eye is dealt a horrific blow, leaving himself stabbed by a spike from Overhaul. Deku steps in once more to fight, trying to send Togata away with Eri to try and escape by breaking open a path for them. Overhaul tries to convince Deku to give up because there is nothing they can do to change the future, but he says that he'll grab the future and twist it to his will to make sure everyone makes that alive. Deku goes for a Manchester smash but just barely misses, allowing Overhaul to deliver two devastating blows that leave Deku with a spike in his arm and leg. Overhaul then calls upon Shin's quirk of confession that he now has due to the two of them combining, and he forces Eri to return from him and admit that she doesn't believe she can be saved. She tries to give herself up and return for overhaul, healing everyone and letting them live. Deku, however, rips free from his leg one of the spikes and says that he doesn't care if Eri wants to be saved or not. For as long as she keeps crying, he will do everything he can to try and help her. Just as the final fight between Deku and overhaul is about to begin, however, the ceiling opens up as Ryuku and her dragon form, along with Froppy and Uraraka, come crashing into the room along with the giant Hasakai member who attacked the start of the raid. The episode wraps up from there, and gosh was I upset. I was so getting into how things were and genuinely was disappointed to see the episode end. So my favorite character in this one was probably Deku. However, I could say Sir Matt Eye as well, as I feel both of their arcs up to this point have been very solid, and what happened in this episode really started to bring stuff to a climax for them. Deku is clearly going to do something pretty wild against Overhaul in the next episode, as in the preview we see very little of him in action, which tells me it'll be something they didn't want to spoil with just a preview. The episode is also going to be called Infinite 100%, which might be him going even further beyond his limits of one for all. I cannot wait to see just how this arc will conclude, and what ramifications it will have not only for Deku, but for the series as a whole going forward. Well, that's going to do it for my review of My Hero Academia Season 4 Episode 12 Unforeseen Hope. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments below and subscribe to Mystic Sage with notifications on so you don't miss my review of the fourth season's next great episode. I've got a lot of great videos about My Hero Academia already on the channel and about plenty of other anime as well with more to come. I hope you guys have been enjoying these reviews and the show so far as well. And I'll be back at it next week with a review of the next exciting My Hero episode.